Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Uh, today we're going to be talking about setting up the uh, HP Tuners VCM scanner to log uh, all of the PIDs that we're going to need for the rest of this video series. So stick around and we will uh, kind of cover some basics today. Welcome to the garage. Okay, so today we are going to kind of do a dive into the VCM scanner, talk about which uh, PIDs and parameters we need to log in order to go through the different tuning steps where we're going to, uh, after this video, we'll get into uh, adjusting the math curve, dialing that in, uh, then we'll look at speed density tuning, basically uh, open loop tuning, closed loop tuning, things like that. Uh, we'll get into uh, verifying our fuel, to make sure we have enough fuel available uh, so we're not maxing out our injectors are basically on the Gen 5s what happens is you run out of the window like you have a window on direct injection engines that's a very tight window we want to make sure that we're injecting fuel to the max within that window if we start exceeding that window it becomes an issue uh, we'll touch on that whenever we get into the the speed density tuning and and also PIDs that allow us to do the torque tuning which once again only applies to Gen 5s so uh, and then also the stuff for adjusting the timing. So in order to do that, initially we need to be hooked into our vehicle. That way we can load up a PID set. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move over into the, uh, the truck and we will look at which PIDs we need to log in order to tune properly. Okay, sorry if it's a little loud in here. Battery was going dead on this thing. I've got a leak that I need to fix, but uh, I went ahead and started the truck because it was beeping at me every 10 seconds telling me that I needed to start it because the battery is about to die. Okay, let's go through the parameters that we're going to need to tune. We need some of the basics, engine RPM, vehicle speed, throttle position, uh, commanded throttle actuator position. This is uh, the difference between these two is throttle position is where your foot is on the pedal, whereas the commanded uh, throttle and like throttle desired position, these have to relate with the throttle body. And you run into issues on torque tuning where the throttle body might actually not be open as much as the command it is. And, and that will get into some issues with uh, what's in control of the torque. We'll get into that later on. Uh, throttle control source, another that goes along with the rest of the things I was talking about on the torque is said. We'll get into that more in depth later on. Air calc mode, uh, driver, driver pedal axle torque uh, request and driver final axle torque request, more torque parameters for tuning the torque tables. Uh, torque management advance, I don't know if you necessarily need that or the TCS desired engine torque, those are probably not as important. These I like to monitor a couple extra things whenever I'm doing torque tuning. So, uh, trash control desired torque, that can be important if, you, if you're making serious amounts of power and you're going into traction control, you can see what part is limiting, whether or not it's transmission or axle torque. Uh, actual axle torque is a, it's gonna be a improbable number in the thousands most likely. Uh, that's because there's a lot of calculations going from the engine torque to the axle torque because of the drive line. So it's good to know that. Same, or, same ordeal with engine torque. Probably don't need peak engine torque on there, uh, our maximum, but these are the important ones right here. So we've got predicted engine torque command, uh, then the predicted engine torque source. This is what is controlling the torque of the engine, and this is what will limit you on your power output if you do not know how to torque or uh, how to tune using uh, the, the Gen 5 torque systems. Uh, then we'll have axle torque command and axle torque source. Same ordeal. This, based on what shows up in this parameter, tells you if you're limiting somewhere. Specifically on an automatic, whenever you're shifting, you'll see the transmission be the torque source. And that's just because it's reducing torque just for the shift process, and then it'll go back over to axle or engine. And then delivered engine torque, probably not something that you need on here. But then we'll get into, for timing, we want timing advance, knock retard, and knock learn factor. And that should be about it. That tells you uh, the timing advance is what lets us set up the timing histogram versus knock. And whenever we see knock, we know that we're having issues and we need to dial back the timing in those cells. Then we're getting into the airflow stuff. We want cylinder air mass, 
dynamic airflow, uh, mass airflow. I'm not sure why I have mass airflow SAE and mass airflow sensor. Those are probably both the same. And then intake uh, manifold absolute pressure, the MAP sensor. So these are for MAF tuning. The others are for speed density tuning. Uh, also need air intake air temp for that. Should be up here, but it's not. Uh, engine coolant temp, of course, that's good to log at any time. That's another one of those safe parameters. Uh, after that, we can look at uh, just the O2 voltages off of your uh, sensor one. We don't care about post cat, so sensor two, don't worry about that. We don't want to log that. And technically, we don't really care about this one either. This is more for doing uh, short term, long term tuning, maybe. Uh, then we want to go into injector pulse width. I'm looking at injector pulse width average uh, and for the two banks, and that's because it's this is a direct injected engine. You can look at straight up pulse width for checking max pulse width on a Gen 4 engine. Uh, but on the, in this situation on the direct injected engines, I like to look at the pulse width average to make sure that we are staying within that window. And we'll get into windows more on the fueling side of things. Uh, then we have the short-term, long-term fuel trim banks. Once, once again, that's just for monitoring LT and ST fuel trims. Then here we get into the important stuff as far as the math goes for uh, the fuel tuning. We want the air to fuel ratio commanded and the equivalence ratio commanded, the EQ ratio commanded. So these are what the ECU is calling for at any time based on if we're in open loop, closed loop, if we're running off the map or the you know the speed density setup. And then we're gonna want this is dead, let me remove this. Your wideband input. And we don't need this one either. And then on top of that, we want closed loop active so we can monitor whether or not we're actually in closed loop whenever we're doing speed density tuning. So that's the big parameters that we're, we're wanting on there. Something to pay attention to on your uh, wideband is sometimes this thing is scaled wrong and you might have to go in and add or subtract decimal places. I wanna say on the AEM by default, it'll actually come in as 10 lambda as opposed to one. But here you can see this is the important one. The EQ ratio is in lambda. We're commanding one lambda. And we, this is our live feedback from our wideband. So this is how we create our histograms is by doing math, comparing the differences between these two and then applying them to uh, what part of the system we're actually tuning at that point in time. And so we're in closed loop right now, which means we've got the O2 sensors as a part of this calculation. Uh, whenever we do math tuning, which is coming up next, we will disable closed loop, we will disable speed density, we will force this thing to fuel strictly off the math and uh, go from there. So this is the basics as far as what we want set up on our PIDs. This should give us a, a good idea for tuning everything that we're gonna touch on in the next four or five videos. Uh, we will get into the histograms uh, specific to what part of the vehicle we're tuning on those videos. And I believe next, uh, the next video that we're going to do is math tuning. So we will get into the mass airflow sensor, how it works, uh, how to tune for it, how to adjust what, you know, and it's a curve setup, how to set up the histogram to see that curve, mimic what you're looking at, and uh, produce a smooth flowing map and then you know that first step really is the way that you can get a vehicle running as quick as possible so say you've made some changes and you're trying to get down to your tuner uh, you know doing a math tune and then keeping it forced over to math is one way to drive the thing down the road safely so uh, we'll get into that but for now let's jump back over to the table and uh, we'll wrap things up okay I know that was Probably a lot of information to digest in a short amount of time. So if you have to, watch the video two times, three times. Get your PID loops ready in your scanner. Once you have those in there, uh, they will populate every time you launch it after that. So, uh, you know, this is, this is kind of the basis. 
We're not quite to tuning yet, but these are the things that you've got to do before you start tuning to make sure that you have everything ready to go. So as I said, we're getting the bases set so we can start tuning. So the next thing that we're going to get into, as I said, is mass airflow sensors. We're going to, we're going to do a deep dive into how they work, uh, how we tune them, how we, you know, the process that we go through, and we will actually go out and tune my MAF sensor. Uh, and, and so make sure that you're subscribed. That way you get the notification whenever the next video comes out. So, and it's going to be a long one. I, you know, they've been pretty short. I try to keep these things as compact as possible. But whenever we get into the meat and potatoes, uh, you know, this is going to be a time investment that you, you, want to, you want to take your time and learn this properly. So that way we're, we're being as safe as humanly possible on this process and, and, and we're producing uh, reliable, predictable results and we're not just, you know, changing things for the fact of changing things. But as usual, thanks for coming around. As I said, if you, you know, drop a subscribe in, uh, you know, throw a thumbs up if you, if you get any value out of these videos and, and uh, you know, I appreciate you taking the time to learn and, and, and do things properly. So we'll, we'll get you tuned in soon, I promise.